Welcome back to the channel. In this video, it's going to be part one to a multi-part series where we build this powder coat oven. So stay tuned for episode two and we will have all the plans and everything ready to go. So let's go ahead and kind of start our walk around of our oven. So we're about four and a half feet wide inside. We're about seven foot tall, excluding the strut. And then we're about 10 foot deep. Um, and this is propane powered. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look at our control panel. We got all of our um, main power switch, obviously emergency stop, the lights inside. So we can turn this on too. That'll alarm when we get to our set temperature. And then we also have the different um, times for the different um, powders that we use kind of preset. So if we do a 400 for 10 minutes, we can start that once our parts get up to temp. Um, and that's pretty cool to be able to just do that and not have to use your phone. You can set multiples at once. Um, and then we get back so that um, PID powers the outlet down here. And this would be um, where our Mr. Heater would be plugged in if we were trying to heat it up right now, which right now we're not. We will do that here in just a minute though. So this is our switched um, outlet for the PID. So when the PID says the temperature got too low, it gives power to this outlet, which then fires up the Mr. Heater. And then this one is just ran around the back here to our double um, feed propane system. So you're able to just kind of switch between um, the different bottles and it'll automatically do that. Um, if like you're feeding out of this tank and it runs out, it'll automatically switch to the other one. And then you can go get your other tank filled while your parts are still baking. Like it doesn't just stop working. So that's pretty cool to be able to have that. Um, so let's go ahead and get this set up and we'll do a time test to see how long it takes to heat up. We got this all ready to go. To start, we'll get a stopwatch ready and we'll go ahead and see. I'll wait for that fan to go and wait for it to ignite and then we'll start our stopwatch. We are starting at 72 degrees. So we have this set and you can see there to go to 410. And then basically the way we have this PID set up is we have it set up to go over by 10 degrees and not come back on until it falls to 400. Um, so this will should run until it gets to 420 and then it should turn the heater off and then we'll carry a little bit of heat once it turns off. Um, I expect it to probably stop around 426 by the time it's all done reading, even after the heater turns off. So we'll just kind of see how this goes.
So there's our 400 mark at just over seven minutes. There's our alarm saying we hit our 410. And so it looks like it's going to be right there, just almost nine minutes to hit 420 to turn off. Let's go over some things on the oven real quick. So up here on the top, you'll see this electrical strut. We added this just for um, some different projects that we have in mind that we might be doing um, to be able to just roll some stuff in on these tracks. Um, this stuff we did not budget in, but I did link it down below. Um, and then most of the tools we used, um, so like the crimp thing to do some of the stuff on these light buckets. We link to them, but it's not budgeted in because you don't absolutely need it. Um, and then we did budget the air rivet gun because it's something like almost 3000 rivets that we installed on this thing. You're going to want an air riveter or if you have like a Milwaukee battery riveter, you're, you're going to want something besides just a hand rivet gun. So we linked down below the air riveter that we used um, and then also the tool that we used to install the riv nuts, which are just like little nut certs that you can put into the studs and the sheet metal that you squeeze and they tighten up into the sheet metal so you can add some bolts to them. Um, and that's what we did here in a couple other places. So we did budget that tool in. Um, and then like this is for our thermocouple and this we just wanted removable so that if we ever had to replace it or do something in there, we can just undo those six screws and pull that out. Um, so we budgeted that tool and everything down below. Everything we used is going to be linked down below. So it's going to be a ton of links, but we went ahead and linked everything we used. And what we'll probably do is... Uh, step out of the oven real quick and go over some of the pricing and probably what will be included into the plans. But uh, there's a lot of tools like different things to do, help with the light buckets uh, that would be helpful. They are linked, but again, not budgeted. Uh, most of the tools, like I said, just not included in the price, but they are linked. So let's get out of the oven and we'll talk some pricing. Okay, so pricing wise, as you guys probably know from the thumbnail, you know we came in right around $5,000 on the build for this oven. So with that, I mean that is basically everything that we had to buy to make this, even budgeting in a propane tank, uh, one of those big 100 pound ones that we use back there. You can use smaller ones and save some money. Um, we just used the bigger ones because we figured we wanted the extra burn time. But so the, the price is right around $5,000. That will fluctuate a lot based on your metal price. Um, this is 16 sheets of 20 gauge, um, four by 10 sheets that we bought. And then we bought two four by 10, um, 16 gauge for the floor just to try to help a little bit with the amount of heat we lose into the concrete because um, we were kind of worried about losing a lot of heat into the concrete. Um, and then we are going to sell the plans for this. So you'll have to stay for video two that'll be coming out next week. And that will have a link to the plans and that's going to have a um, drawing of each part. So it'll have the drawing of that thermocouple, the box that we made for it, the plate for it, all the brackets we made, all, um, I'm gonna try to do one for all the walls, the door, the roof, um, everything that you need to measure out and um, make. So if I don't get the drawings of the walls and stuff, I will at least have dimensions in there and everything for you um, for certain parts. Like I don't know if I'm gonna 
do this little cutout in there. That's all stuff we added on the fly and you can change for whatever height you want it at. Um, so I might just add some dimensions in the notes for those of kind of what height we put them at. Um, but yeah, so we'll include all of that in the plans. It'll also include all the cut files. So you'll have DXF files for all the stuff that we plasma cut, like the control box. Um, you'll get those, the box the for the thermocouple, the cover plate for the thermocouple. Um, the non-contact thermometer holder, as stupid as that is, I will put that in there um, just because it is kind of nice to have a place for it. Um, so we will have all of that linked in all of the videos after this one. I just don't have it all the way finished yet. And we are currently filming this like the you guys will be watching this in less than 12 hours. So um, I have not got all the plans finished, but we will be selling those and we will have a discount code too. So this is gonna be like eight videos, I think, seven or eight videos, and we're gonna run a discount code until the last one goes live and then maybe like a week extra um, to where if you guys buy the plans during the build series that you'll get a discount on it. So make sure you stay tuned for episode two, and I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're not subscribed, do that down below, give the video a thumbs up and make sure you share it with someone that you think would be interested in building their own powder coat oven. Thanks for watching.